It is my honor to welcome you uh, to the 10th anniversary uh, commemoration of 9-11. Uh, this commemoration remembers the nearly 3,000 people, 2,996 to be exact, who lost their lives in the World Trade Center, who lost their lives in Pennsylvania, and who lost their lives in uh, uh, the crash at the Pentagon. It also honors among those our first responders, the 341 New York firemen who lost their lives at the World Trade Center, the 23 New York police officers who also lost their lives, and the 37 uh, Port Authority officers who lost their lives. And least we not forget the approximately 6,000 young men and women who have lost their lives fighting for our country in both Afghanistan and Iraq. So this is to remember, this is to commemorate, and all, above all else, never forget what was done to us and what has been done for us, and to, above all else, not just talk about those who lost their life, who had their lives taken away from them on that horrible day 10 years ago, but also to uh, show appreciation and remember those who gave up their lives so that others could live. It is estimated that probably 25,000 people were saved by a New York City policeman and New York firemen. And so obviously we have a debt of gratitude to all of those. And to even, they say, the 90,000 or so people who are suffering from various illnesses due to what they had to encounter that day in New York City and in the Pentagon. In uh, officiating this afternoon's service, I will be joined by Steve Elter, the Imam and President of the Islamic Organization of North America, the first mosque in the city of Warren. Imam Elter is also the President of the Board of Directors of the Interfaith Center for Racial Justice for ICRJ, which has planned and is hosting this event with the city of Warren. With that in mind, Imam Elter. Thank you, Mayor. Friends, may I greet you with the universal Muslim greeting, Assalamu Alaikum, which means peace be with you. I too am honored to be with Mayor Phelps and all of you on this momentous anniversary. Please allow me before we start the program to praise God Almighty for giving us this opportunity to come together in solidarity to show our strength and commitment to one another and our country. Today is an important date for America and the world. Today we observe the 10th anniversary of one of the darkest days in American history. Let me introduce the choir from Life Application Ministries Church in Warren that will formally start our ceremony with the National Anthem of the United States. After we conclude, Sergeant First Class Adrian Sutello, who served for 26 years in the armed services and is a veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan, will come forward with some of the teenagers who have participated in the ICRJ's Listen, Learn, and Live summer camps to build bridges of understanding and friendships between cultures and faith traditions. Sergeant Adrian Sutello and the teenagers will lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance.
whose lives were tragically taken on September 11, 2001, as well as for those whose lives were cut short as a result of illness which resulted from the cleanup. Okay, I, I would like to introduce uh, Sergeant uh, First Class Arian Sudello. Ladies and gentlemen, we may stand in for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please face the flag. Try to hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Sergeant Irvian Sotelo. Before I, before I ask Mayor Fouts to take the podium, I would like to briefly introduce him, particularly for those who don't know him. James Fouts is the mayor of the third largest city in Michigan, the city of Warren in Macomb County. He served for 26 years on the Warren City Council starting in 1981. He grew up in Hazel Park, Michigan, where his father was city manager. Mayor Fouts was a social studies teacher in the Warren Consolidated School District and taught government at Sterling Heights High School. He was elected as Warren's mayor in 2007. I have known Mayor Fouts for many years he has been a tremendous supporter of our rapidly growing, diverse city. Among many achievements that made our city an inclusive one is the endorsement of the resolution reaffirming the American core values of freedom, equality, and justice the Warren City Council unanimously passed last year. Mayor Jim Fouts. Um, I would just like to take a moment and just thank everybody who's, who is here tonight. This is clearly an example of diversity in America with the wide variety of people we have and the right wide stature of persons here today. Today, as I earlier said, commemorates the 10th anniversary of 9-11 attacks on American soil. Like December 7th, 1941, which my parents used to often mention to me, was the day that Pearl Harbor was attacked, and everyone remembers where they were when they first heard of 9-11 attacks as well. President Franklin D. Roosevelt said December 7, 1941 was a day that will live in infamy, and September 11, 2001 is a day that will live forever in our memories. Now, a memorial to the nearly 3,000 people who died in the 9-11 attacks was formally dedicated today on the, at the World Trade Center by President Barack Obama and former President uh, Bush. 
to show the world and potential terrorists that America stands as a beacon of resiliency and courage. And now we're going to have a new World Trade Center, which will be completed by 2013. The impact on September 11th on public health continues through 2011. As I earlier indicated, nearly 90,000 people are at risk of or suffering from negative health effects as a result of the events, including 14,000 workers, 2,400 community residents who are sick, and tens of thousands of others whose health is being monitored. In my mind, any terrorist act is one word, cowardly. Hiding behind the Muslim religion is even more cowardly. Justice must prevail when it comes to punishing anyone even remotely responsible for 9-11. But our system of justice must be fair. We cannot condemn all Muslims, just those who betray their religious beliefs with acts of terrorism. We must remember that there were many Muslims who were amongst the 3,000 people who were killed on 9-11. The acts of bravery at 9-11 further memorialized that day. A total of 411 emergency workers who responded to the scene died as they tried to rescue people and fight fires. The New York City Department, as I earlier said, lost 341 firefighters as well as two paramedics. The New York Police Department, as I earlier stated, lost 23 officers. The Port Authority the Police Department also lost an additional 37 officers. Eight emergency medical technicians and paramedics from private emergency medical service units were killed as well. Known as first responders, these individuals paid the ultimate sacrifice and should serve as a permanent reminder of the dangers that our nation's firefighters and police officers face every day because they willingly went into the World Trade Center and where we say that many people had their lives taken from them, our firefighters, our police officers, willingly went in and gave their life so that others could be saved, including 25,000 people. We should call these firefighters and police officers our freedom fighters because they protect all our cherished American freedoms. Let me add another freedom, the freedom from fear of terrorism. If it weren't for the vigilance of our first responders, we would be afraid to go anywhere. We would even be afraid to be at this event today. At the same time, we cannot let others' freedoms die in the name of protecting our freedom from fear. We must always protect our freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Incidentally, as mayor, I'm proud to say that I protected our right to practice freedom of religion by allowing a Ramadan display just a little over a year ago last August, and I allowed a nativity scene to be displayed in City Hall for the same reason. A so-called group called Freedom From Religion opposed the nativity scene in writing to me, and my response was no one religion was favored, and all religions are free to display their religious beliefs at City Hall. That's why we display Ramadan in August, and that's why as long as I'm mayor, we will continue to display not only Ramadan, but the nativity scene in December. Now, Equal treatment is another core value, and that is the defense I use in equal treatment of all people, regardless of race, creed, or ethnic background, is what America is all about, and we should never, ever forget that. The idea of equal treatment goes back to 1776. It was born in 1776, and it will continue to exist today. Now, it is easy to stereotype an individual because of his background, but the whole idea of this great American experience experiment is equality under the law. Judge people on their individual personality, not what church, not what synagogue, or not what mosque they attend, or what their ethnic or racial background is. And I often have to quote Harry Truman, who said, Judge a man on his merit alone, not on his ethnic background. We judge people as individuals. We do not judge people 
on their religious background or on their ethnicity. Now, America was attacked on 9-11 because our, station, our nation stands for freedom, equality, and justice, all part of the great core democratic values of our country. Attacks such as 9-11 should not discourage these values, but reinforce them into the traditions we cherish as Americans. Thank you, and God bless America. And God bless Good afternoon. I am Reverend Mikhail Curl. I am the Executive Director of the Interfaith Center for Racial Justice. I want to thank Mayor Fouts for his remarks and for once again lifting up our American core values of freedom, equality, and justice. And I also want to thank him and the City of Warren for hosting and planning today's ceremony with us, particularly since he was criticized for doing so. A columnist at the Macomb Daily made a point that this and all of the 10th anniversary of 9-11 commemoration services today are many years too late. He wrote, America's darkest day, September 11, 2001, has somehow been relegated to a once in a decade recognition status. I'd like to address this point since my organization, the ICRJ, was central in planning today's ceremony. And we've also been criticized. First, it is true that each anniversary of 9-11 is very important. But certain anniversaries, the 10th, 25th, 50th, whatever, will always be given more attention, not because they're more important, but rather because they mark milestones and allow us to more deeply reflect, just like any big anniversary in our own lives. We simply don't have the emotional and mental energy to give every annual anniversary full observance. And I would contend that this is especially true with today's momentous anniversary, since I know of no other event than September 11th, 2001, that caused so much emotional anguish, psychological pain, and spiritual crisis. I suggest it would be an emotional wreck if we gave every anniversary of this event as much attention as we're giving it today. Because the event was so raw, so tragic, so emotional, so life-changing, that we are simply not equipped to handle that depth of that pain and fear each and every year. As a Christian pastor, I have had much perhaps too much experience with grieving. And what never ceases to amaze me is how so many wish that they could grieve in one week and to get back on with their lives unchanged. Grieving is not an easy process. It takes time. It's often messy. And it takes courage. It takes spiritual resolve and strength to move forward and hope and not to get stuck in the past, focused on the lost, angry about the event, or bitter regarding what happened. Ten years later, all of us still feel deep pain, but hopefully we are all ready to begin or to continue healing so that we do not remain mired in anger, but instead can move forward with hope. We had wished that the family of Susan Kondratenko would be here today to participate in our ceremony. For Suzanne was the only victim of 9-11 with roots in Macomb County. I spoke to her father, who called in response to my written invitation. He thanked me graciously for that invitation and shared that he and his wife would be in New York City today. In our brief conversation, I could not only hear, but feel his pain. And as I told him, all of our thoughts and prayers are with him and with everyone who lost a loved one so tragically in the horror of September 11th, 2001. We will never forget the tragedy, the senseless loss of innocent lives, 
as well as the heroic actions of so many. We must continue to grieve and to work at enlarging our focus of this date from loss to hope. Unfortunately, Mayor Fouts was not only criticized for simply having today's ceremony, but also for allowing a Muslim to co-officiate. His staff was berated with an angry phone call. He was told that today's ceremony should only be for Christians. As an ordained Christian pastor, such a perspective saddens me deeply. Not just because Jesus' central commandment was to love thy neighbor as thyself, but also as a community organizer who believes that we will not see lasting peace until we recognize our common humanity and truly believe that we are all brothers and sisters. We should not let our anger and horror over what happened a decade ago consume us. We need, frankly, to stop blaming Muslims for the actions of a few extremists. And instead, we have to unite around our core values of freedom, equality, and justice. Only with such unity can we build a better world for all. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, just days before he was assassinated, let us rise up with a greater readiness. Let us stand with a greater determination. And let us move on in these powerful days, these days of challenge, to make America what it ought to be. We have an opportunity to make America a better nation. As Mayor Fouts emphasized, we can seize the opportunity to make America better if we stand shoulder to shoulder. May we work together to do so. For friends, only then can we honor the memories of those who died if we create a world that they would be proud to live in. Amen. At this time, I would like to ask Mayor Fouts to join me and U.S. Congressman Sander Levin as we invite all of the elected officials present today to assist us in placing a wreath in memory of those who died and also to commend the first responders and police, fire and servicemen and women and all the public servants who selflessly serve to protect us. Hopefully, in due time, we can work together to replace this wreath with a permanent marker so that generations to come will never forget 9-11, not only for its senseless death and violence, but most important, as the catalyst for our living and loving in unity. Mayor Fouts, Congressman Levin, we are also joined by Councilman Keith Sadowski, Councilman Pat Green, Councilman Scott Stevens, Councilman Robert Bacamino, Councilman Steve Warner, Councilwoman Donna Comartin, unfortunately Council President Mary Camp is at St. Louis. We're also joined by Rec State Rep Lucia Liss, uh, State Senator Steve Bita, and I think that's all. Okay, uh, we're going to have a 21 gun salute now. It's going to be loud for some of the kids. You might want to plug your ears. Sometimes people, are, you know, even though we announce it, they're a little shocked. So, with that, um, there's the honor guard. Introduction to our prayer litany. If you take out the blue insert that's with your program, you will see that the people's response is 
in God we trust. What a beautiful hymn. Thank you so very much. As we get ready to do this prayer, let me just some quick facts for you. I'm sure Mayor Faust is a former government teacher, history teacher, would be aware of this, but I wanted to share this with all of us. Four quick facts about In God We Trust. First, to note that in 1864, our United States Congress first approved putting that wording on what was then the two-cent coin that was used, the two-cent coin across this country. Then in 1908, legislation was passed by Congress to approve the phrase that God we trust on all of our U.S. coins. Those pennies, those nickels, those dimes, those quarters. That's about as much as I can go. That's as high as I ever get in my pocket. And then in 1955, in God we trust became the phrase also used on our paper money. Those dollar bills, five dollar bills, ten dollar bills, twenty dollar bills, and I never see the others going up. <laughs> and then in 1956, our United States Congress declared that the phrase, in God we trust, would become our national motto for this country. And so it's only fitting today that we would first sing about in God we trust, and that we would use it as the cornerstone of our prayer living. So please pray with me now. We remember today the 10th anniversary of September 11th, 2001, and the people pray. In God we trust. We remember people whose lives were lost, whose dreams were shattered, whose futures were forever changed, and the people say. In God we trust. We remember today that you call us, God, to bear one another's burdens, to love our enemies, and pray for those who persecute us. And the people say, In God we trust. You call us to pray for the leaders of nations and for all who are in positions of leadership, for the care and well-being of others. And the people say, In God we trust. You call us to live compassionately and kindly with hearts of forgiveness and love. And the people say, In God we trust. You call us to let there be peace on earth and let it begin with us. And the people say, You call us to live together as one human community with freedom, equality, and justice for all. And the people say, Gracious and everlasting God, remember us each day as we remember the events of 10 years ago today. All this we pray as the people say, in God we trust. Amen. Well, I'm back to give you my closing comments and remarks. And this is what I have to say. The tragedy of September 11, 2001 will never be forgotten. The date brings back painful memories. The horrific sight of airplanes crashing into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York, in New York City left us stunned and in a state of awe. People from all walks of life and religious backgrounds, including Muslims, have perished at the hands of evildoers on September 11, 2001. Among the courageous first responders were Muhammad Salman, Rodina Ramadan, and Kevin James, all Muslims, who among countless others rushed to ground zero to rescue the lives of others. We salute all the responders for their courage and their selflessness. It is absurd to accuse all Muslims of being terrorists. Ten years later, the fact is, Islamophobia is rampant, anti-Semitism is out of control, 
and racism is prevalent. It's all evil. America is for all. Christians, Jews, Muslims, and every other faith. America is for whites, blacks, and every color in between. America is for Arabs, Europeans, Asians, Africans, and every race on earth. It is this diversity that makes America so beautiful. The Quran, the holy scripture of Muslims, and all faiths, traditions, teach that we, children of Adam, belong to one race, the human race. Chapter 49, verse 13 reads, O mankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other not that you may despise each other in the end it is all about equality and fraternity in the aftermath of this tragic event and as a result of this unfortunate tragedy thousands and thousands of people here and abroad also died, including American soldiers and innocent men, women, and children. We, as people of conscience, who cherish our diversity, have a moral obligation and responsibility to live as one family, working together to combat evil through peaceful means. The Holy Quran reminds, Good and evil cannot be equal. Repel evil with what is better. And the one whom between you and him is enmity will become a devoted friend. It's time we roll up our sleeves and get to work. Let us together build a better future for our children and the children to come. May they be blessed with peace and love and may the justice we establish for them remain our mark till the day of judgment. Our thoughts and prayers are with everyone who was affected by the unforgettable tragedy. May God Almighty with his unmatched power heal our wounds and help us build a strong, vibrant, and inclusive community and country. Amen. In the end, I would like to thank you all for attending this memorable event. And special thanks goes to Mayor Faust for co-officiating the ceremony for his leadership and special remarks. We would like to also thank Henry Bowman and the City of Warren for all of their assistance in planning this afternoon's commemoration of the 10th anniversary of 9-11. We would also like to thank Congressman Levin and all of the state and local elected officials for public service. Another thank you goes to America's white heroes serving in the military police and fire departments as paramedics and ambulance drivers and in service organizations everywhere. We also thank the Warren Police Guard and we thank Kingsley Sears and the Warren Community Chorus as well as the choirs, the choirs from Life Application Ministries and Emmanuel Church and the Warren Mount High School Marching Band. Special thanks goes to Devin, Kevin Cups and Ignited Lighting and Sound for providing the sound. We would, we would also like to thank Veteran Sergeant First Class Adrian Sotelo and also the Listen, Learn and Live Summer Campers and last but not certainly least Reverend Mikhail Kuru, Reverend Roger Fischioni, Father Gary Schulte, 
and Kerry Collegio for all of their efforts in planning and participating in today's service. Before we end the program, I would like to ask my good friend, Father Gary Schulte from St. Sylvester Church to come forward and offer his closing prayer. I would ask you to stand. And remember, today is not a day of fear. It's a day of healing and hope. Please join hands together. And I'd like to close with a prayer from a wonderful lady who always radiated healing and hope. This is the prayer of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, arterial motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. But you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world your best that you have. It may never be enough, but give the world the best that you've got. You see in the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. God bless America forever and ever.